I, I totally understand how we can get out of loving communication. Um, we get really busy in our lives. We get stressed out. Um, we get triggered. And um, we're just doing what we think that we can do to protect ourselves. And we kind of, if you think of like a kind of a dog gets its, um, its bowl taken or something, it lashes out. And we kind of lash out sometimes to kind of assert ourselves there. Um, but if we do that either um, aggressively or passive aggressively, it just creates more space in between us and our beloved. And it's usually our beloved or somebody that we really love that it happens most to. And I find that it happens most to people that I love, but that I'm in a relationship with because we're used to each other. We're comfortable with each other. And I kind of know my, my mind knows that if I lash out right here, you know, we're going to recover and um, I'm not going to lose their friendship forever, but um, we're, it's going to have to be something that's going to be patched up. <laughs> and I'm just, I guess I'm thinking, I'll patch it up later, but right now I just need to say this thing or put energy behind these words. So all that is completely understood about how it happens. Sometimes there's deep resentment. Sometimes there's infidelity. Sometimes there's not listening or honoring or respecting the person. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, but if we realize that at the real core of it, what's really happening is that old energies are being played out. The old energies from childhood. And of course, we see a lot of this during uh, Christmas time and holiday time when we're together with family and friends that have been with us, you know, all our lives or most of our lives. And they know us in a certain way and they know how to kind of manipulate us and talk to us and, you know, put us in our place and, and that kind of thing. And we know how to do the same thing with them. Um, but when that shows up again, then we start to get triggered and we say, God, why is it you're thinking to yourself, why does this keep on happening to me? Or in my regular life, in my uh, normal relationship, why is I I'm, I'm being spoken to the same way? Well, what I've seen what happens is if you're used to being controlled or um, suppressed in your childhood by your family mem members, your parents, or your siblings, you get used to that. And it's kind of like you go into your relationship saying, watch, this is going to happen again, and I'm, I'm going to be on the lookout for it to assert myself in an in a even stronger way. So it's kind of like you you know how you do with your brother and sister and you assert yourself in a certain way and then you get into a relationship and you go, okay, this person I can, I can do something with because they don't have so much control over me as my sibling did. But it just gets worse. And um, unless it's really looked at honestly and with love, it just continues on. And that can be the the basis for your breakup eventually so what i've learned from uh to how to restore into loving communication is when i start to feel myself getting into that place of uh, you know a little bit of energy a little bit of um spitefulness or resentment or saying things with not um with no, without love um it can be very subtle and when I feel that, I, I start asking myself, okay, hold on a second. This is the person that is the love of your life. How do you really want to talk to them? And my mind wants to give me all these excuses about why I'm validated in talking to this to them this way. And then I ask myself, what would I what would if she was my grandmother? That one really hits me. What if she was my grandmother? And my grandmother is nine years old and barely able to walk and she's alone her, her husband has died many years ago and here's this person in front of me how would i treat my grandmother how would i if she wanted some sugar for her coffee how would i respond to her you know if uh if, if she had dirty clothes that needed to be washed how would i respond to her how would i would i just allow her just to do her own wash or would I say hey grandma can I do your wash for you <laughs> you know can I let me take those dishes from you let me let me do this for you um, how are you feeling and the my tone in talking to my grandmother would be so soft and so gentle and if that doesn't work for you think about talking to your beloved or the person that you're in a relationship with in the tone that you might speak to like a four or five year old how are you doing today <laughs> how are you feeling is there anything that i can do for you no I, I i feel that you have some sadness right now what's been going on and that real gentleness of 
uh, really connecting with that person as a little girl, a little boy, and seeing if you can connect with them from your heart. And I learned something really deeply when I was doing equine therapy uh, with my friend, Michelle Patterson, Peterson. And uh, she really taught me about connecting with these horses through your heart. And I tried to do whatever I could, you know, through telepathy and mind control and, you know, being a nice guy and all that stuff. And it never worked until I got into my heart and connected my heart with the horse's heart. And you can really feel the difference when you actually do connect your heart with a horse's heart or with anybody's heart. And it's not a manipulation. It's not a trying to do something to get something. It's just connection. And when we can do that with our with our partner, with our love interests, and connect that way and restore that, because that connection that we that that person needs is actually what we need. Think about all the all the times that you struck out against somebody and energetically, you know, bashed someone, or just wasn't in your loving presence. What you're doing and what actually what what they're needing from you is what you need from you. And the way that I kind of keep on enforcing that and reinforcing that is to is to listen to my mind and it's trying to manipulate me to do something that my heart doesn't really want to do. My ego mind wants to do these things and wants to listen to itself and say, well, she did this or he did that. And it's all very valid to the mind, but I'm not my mind. I'm a heart and I and my heart is the one that knows the best for me. And what if I just said, screw it i'm just going to be a loving presence so no matter how much validation there is to be not a loving presence and to be um a little bit of an asshole you know i it's, there's validation there that yeah i i can be this way but my heart the other thing i think about too is what if this person were to die tomorrow you know she just don't know you know my dad died when he was 33 i had 12 years with him and then he died and it just makes me realize that anything can happen, especially now, you know, people are talking about people dying from COVID and cancer was, you know, of course you don't hear about cancer very much anymore. It's all about COVID, but there, the point is that there's, there's so much opportunity for death. And you know, I just don't want to be on the other side of that, of having my last words be words of hate or anger or even passive aggressiveness. And I know that I, I don't do it 100% and I, I do the best that I can in the moment. And I, I know that if I don't, the best thing I can do is just completely forgive myself and then do better next time. So, oh, there's a little squirrel. <laughs> um, what else did I wanna say? Well, the other part of it is recognize that what's going on right now is not about what's happening right now. It's all about what you brought into the relationship. Whatever theme is going on, but what you're what you're getting pissed off or triggered about is not about what's happening now. It's about what you brought into the relationship. And there's a certain theme. And again, I'll say this again. So it said it so many times. My theme was guilt and obligation and feeling insignificant, underappreciated, and unacknowledged. And that's way past history. But if it trickles up into a conversation, I know that it's mine to look at and it's being brought up. And it's um, sort of like I'm a receiver of that frequency and I'm a transmitter of that particular frequency. So when my communication starts getting a little wonky, I realize that it's probably due to something in that theme of mine. It's probably having to do with that something was said or done or not done or not said. Who knows what happened? But somehow I felt an energy that brought up that same frequency. So the best thing that I can do is to restore myself back to love and presence and realize that I'm not really here. I'm, I'm all consciousness having this experience. And what I'm feeling right now is this theme. And the theme is about not feeling worthy and not feeling loved that something was done or said and some of us can be very sensitive to these things 
that the most innocuous thing can be said, or again, you know, not even said, that something wasn't said is the trigger. So just realizing that, you know, it's whatever you're feeling, whatever energy that is not of this loving presence is something for you to look at. And it's not about the other person. So imagine that the other person is here to bring you back into loving presence. Before you die, before you leave this earth, they're going to bring up whatever is not of loving presence. And however you react that is not of that loving presence is going to be brought up so that you can look at it and release it. So imagine what a gift that is for any person that triggers you in that way, that you start to move away from loving uh, communication, that they're showing you, hey, here's something that brings you away from loving communication. So again, the, the practical things is just to realize yourself is to be more aware of your responses and your reactions. So um, moving from total reaction from the ego of mind into a loving response. And it's, I know it sounds really simple and, and, and easy, but it is simple, maybe not so easy, but it is a practice of just coming out of reaction and being in more presence and realizing what it is that you were reacting to. What was the, what was the thing that you felt? What, what were you believing was true in that moment? And then coming back to loving presence and then speaking to that person like they're your grandmother, they're like they're a, your little daughter, you know, your little baby, or if it's Jesus Christ or Muhammad or the Buddha sitting there right in front of you, how would you speak to them? And could it be that that Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, any one of those is in that body? Maybe, maybe in that body in front of you is actually you as, an, as a little child showing up in front of you in a, in a different body. That's another one that could, kind of trips me out. It's, maybe this person in front of me is actually me. And I need to give me what me really needs. <laughs> just, in the, just a little something there to blow your mind. I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday or continue and you have a wonderful holiday. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever your flavor is. I love you. Thank you. Bless you. Have the most wonderful day and a fantastic new year. Bye-bye.